I've been hearing a lot of praise about the dividend growth ETF, DGRW. And I hear things like this all the time. So I rub my hands together and I start doing my nerdy research to tell everyone why they should stay away. I'm here to tell you that DGRW is very solid long-term investment. I think the most misunderstood thing about this ETF is that most people consider it a dividend holding in their portfolio. I think it's more akin to a cornerstone holding where things like VOO and VTI live. In this video, we'll dive deep into the details of DGRW and we'll compare it to my three primary holdings. And I'll show you where I would add this ETF to my portfolio allocation if I were to start a position. Before that, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Jeff Teeples and here we aim to grow your wealth with simple, time-tested solutions. Please smash that like button and tell a friend about the channel. More importantly, drop me a comment with your thoughts about DGRW or any other ETF that you like. Let's grow. DGRW Basics. DGRW is the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth ETF. It is passively managed by replicating the WTDGI. What's that? No clue, I was hoping you could tell me. Just kidding, it's the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Index. I sincerely didn't know what that was, so I did some digging. The index is based on a set criteria, much like SCHD. It screens companies that have a market cap of at least $2 billion, and then out of all those companies, it selects the top 300 companies with the best combined growth and quality factors. Its growth factor ranks the companies based on long-term earnings growth expectations. Its quality factor ranks the company on three-year historical averages for return on equity and return on assets. These are not what I deem to be the most important factors for selecting stocks, but the ETF does have a solid performance history. One thing I thought was really cool about this index is how it weights the 300 holdings. It's dividend weighted to reflect the projected dividend payments for each company for the next year. It seems like most passively managed ETFs are weighted on market cap, but I think it's interesting to set the allocations based on the dividends paid in the coming year. DGRW Deep Dive. Let's get a better idea of what DGRW is all about before we dive into our back test comparisons. I've pulled up DGRW on Seeking Alpha, which I think is the best site on the internet for researching stocks and ETFs. And the first thing I'd like to point out here is that its expense ratio of 0.28% or 28 basis points is quite a bit higher than any of my other three holdings, which range from 0.03 to 0.10%, three to 10 basis points. Let's jump over to the holdings breakdown. You'll notice this will look a lot like an S&P 500 ETF such as VOO, with technology being about 29%, healthcare is at 17, industrials, financials, consumer defensive, and consumer cyclical are anywhere from 10 to 13% by sector, and it just has a touch of these other sectors over here. And just to show you how similar it is to the S&P 500, I've pulled up the ETF VU, the S&P 500 ETF, and you can see here technology is also 29%. The other similar categories are anywhere from 13 to 8%, so not identical. And then you have your subcategories over here. So we're back to DGRW here. And one thing I really like about it is its top 10 holdings. Not only do they only account for 36% of the overall weight of the ETF, which is extraordinarily low compared to most ETFs, but they also have probably the most recognizable and solid combination of growth and dividend companies I've ever seen in a top 10 holdings. Normally, I don't pound into this level of detail, but check this out. Microsoft, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, AbbVie, Broadcom, The Home Depot, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, and Cisco Systems. You might literally not be able to get more balanced than that if you tried. And these range from anywhere from 7% for Microsoft, all the way down to about 2.22% of Cisco. So I really like that the fund isn't overly concentrated in its top holdings. Now for a dividend ETF, I say that in quotes, its dividend stats are fairly disappointing. You can see the dividend yield is 1.77% here, and its five-year dividend growth rate is 7.15%, which is solid, but SCHD is over 13, and even the market VU is around six, 
bucks and VGT is about 13. And it's grown its dividends for two years in a row. Although the dividend growth is not as stable as SCHD, it does grow over time quite a bit when you zoom out a bit here. Now we're going to compare the total returns of DGRW compared to the market VU. And just note that these numbers might be slightly different than my spreadsheet because I did make them one day apart. So year to date, DGRW is up a very respectable 19%. The market's up 26%, so it's trailing the market a little bit year to date. Zoom out to one year, which is about the same as year to date at this point, year 23% to 19. When you look at three years, DGRW has outperformed the market 39 to 34. Five years, they're neck and neck. The market has a slight edge at 107 compared to 103. And zooming out 10 years, DGRW has ever so slightly outperformed the market and total returns by 2%, 211 to 209. So a very solid performer, and as I alluded to earlier, it's more of a cornerstone holding than it is a dividend specialist or a growth specialist. Comparing DGRW to my dream team. I think a well-built modern three fund portfolio should consist of three types of ETFs. A cornerstone ETF to provide exposure to the broad US stock market a growth ETF that focuses on companies with high growth potential, and a dividend ETF that replaces the traditional portfolio's bonds holdings. The amount of each of the three categories that someone should hold will really depend on your age, goals, risk tolerance, and current work situation. My favorite holding for each of these three categories is as follows. The cornerstone ETF is VU, which is the S&P 500, and VTI, a total US stock market index, is a great alternative. For the growth ETF, I go VGT, which is 100% technology. And QQQM is a great alternate holding if you want a little more sector balance. And for the dividend ETF, I go with SCHD. And I don't really have a good alternate, and I'll explain that more in a bit. I think that DGRW really is a hybrid of all three of these ETFs. I would slot it into my cornerstone section if I was forced to place it somewhere. Let's check out some comparison data. This spreadsheet shows the tickers right here, and here's DGRW. We have this sorted by total return, and it has my three favorite holdings, my growth ETF, VGT, my cornerstone, VU, and my dividend ETF, SCHD. The first category is the yield, and you can see that VGT is by far the lowest, SCHD is by far the highest. DGRW and VU are relatively similar to one another. When you look at the five-year dividend Kager, VGT and SCHD are sky high, and DGRW and VU are right around each other. And when you look at the 10 year total return, so we're zooming out quite a bit here and seeing how they perform over time. VGT, a true growth ETF, is by far and away the best. SCHD is trailing a little bit with the focus on dividends, although sometimes it keeps up with the market, but it's had a little bit of a rough run lately. And once again, DGRW and VU are very similar. DGRW is a quality cornerstone holding. And this spreadsheet here shows a quick overview of fund overlap. So I like my dividend and growth holding things to counterbalance one another to protect me in up and down markets. As you can see here, SCHD and VGT, my two favorites, have only a 6% weighted overlap, and almost all that is Broadcom, and I'll take Avgo any day of the week. DGRW overlap with VU, the market, is 45%, and then DGRW also has quite a bit of overlap with SCHD at 29%, and it also has a lot of overlap with VGT at at 27%. What this tells us is that DGRW is a quality fund that has a little bit of everything. It's a jack of all trades compared to SCHD or VGT, and it is very akin to VU, which is also well diversified jack of all trades. A VGT and SCHD mix is better. DGRW is a well performing ETF with solid methodology behind it but a 50% VGT, 50% SCHD mix is far better for your portfolio long-term. It destroys DGRW and all three components of the Holy Trinity. It gets superior returns in almost any type of market while also cash flowing better with a higher dividend yield along with a superior dividend growth rate as well. Let's check it out. 
We're going to use Portfolio Visualizer to do a back test to compare DGRW Portfolio 1 with a 50-50 mix of SCHD and VGT Portfolio 2. We're going to take a 10-year stretch, which is 2014 through 2023, include year-to-date, yes, and this website has data through November. We're gonna take an initial amount of 10,000 and we're going to contribute $500 a month. We're going to reinvest dividends and display income at the end so we can see which one cash flow is better. So I've already hit Analyze Portfolio. And when you come down here to the performance summary, you can see that you, we started with 10,000 here. You ended up with $176,000 with the mix compared to $140,000 with DGRW. You can see here with the portfolio growth that they tend to trend together. And this is generally how the market works for most ETFs. When they go up, they go up. When one goes down, they both go down, etc. So they sort of stick together here during their journey and the mix just slowly gets ahead. And when you look at the annual returns year by year, DGRW is the blue bar and SCHD plus VGT mix are the red bars. You can see that almost every single year, nine of 10 years, the mix outperforms on a total return basis, DGRW. You can see that here, big outperform there. The one year, so not quite the downside protection, at least in 18, it had decent downside protection. Apparently in 2022, tech was really beat up. I think VGT hurt us here. And then we're back to how it's been. So nine of 10 years, the mix out returned DGRW. Let's check out the annual annualized returns. Over the last three years, the mix has 11.5% to 10.8% of DGRW. Over the last five years, we're at 17% versus 12.1%. And over the full time horizon, you're at 15.3% compared to 11.6%, which this right here is about what the market VU has been. Very solid ETF, but VGT and SCHD just outperforms it in almost any market. And you may be thinking, yeah, but what about portfolio income? What about my cash flow? VGT is just a growth ETF. Well, as you can see here, SCHD and VGT out cash flows the dividend ETF DGRW as well. But as that growth rate we looked at earlier kicks in, you can see it really come into play here. We're talking about $2,600 of income instead of 2K. And the next year you're looking 3,200 instead of 2.5K and so on. Looks like this year's tightened up a little bit, although SCHD did have a big quarter four dividend, which is not included here. The one thing you might think would suffer with the mix by comparison also outperforms this broad ETF. Conclusion. I think that DGRW is a solid ETF that will perform pretty well over the long haul. While it's not my favorite ETF because of its fairly high expense ratio, along with its lacking a specific role within my modern three fund portfolio, I think dollar cost averaging into this thing will put together some pretty good performance over any stretch of years. Please drop me a comment down below with your favorite ETF of any type to prove you're one of the real ones. For me, it's still VGT all the way. Check out one of these two videos next if you want to watch what an AI bot that's smarter than I am thinks that you want to see. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you here every single Thursday and usually on a Sunday. Peace.